then after you were fired, you were also arrested, correct? Correct. You were charged with 24 felony charges? Yes, ma'am. You understand that a felony is a crime that's punishable by more than one year? Yes, ma'am. So with the 24 felony counts you were charged with, you were facing potentially 170 years in prison, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And you were allowed to enter a no contest plea rather than a guilty plea? Yes, ma'am. And adjudication was withheld, meaning that you are not, as you sit here, a convicted felon, correct? Correct. Anti-Afro Spengalis. I thought I'd give a reminder about the realities of disparity. I would really encourage you to listen to the exchange with respect to this sweet deal this person got. I won't give it away, but I put it at the back end of the video. The purpose of me sharing this is there are some subjects who just don't get the message. They don't realize they are not going to get a sweet deal when the consequences are delivered. Now, it doesn't have to be a criminal case, but you're seeing what I'm talking about. I'm talking about anything that involves consequences. Very specifically, these demons have come into an all-black space or nearly all-black space for a specific purpose, to do and get away with things they would never even dream of trying around white folks or non-black folks. They're only going to come and try this on their own people. And this complacency about nothing's going to happen. Well, when something does happen, don't count on getting a sweet deal like this. You know what I think is the most sickening about this whole situation, about coming into a black space and thinking you can say and do whatever you want to someone else because they're also black, is this outrage that is felt when people decide they're going to defend themselves. They are really expecting others to accept what they're dishing out. And I can only conclude this is how they're used to being treated. They treat each other like garbage up here hanging around and thinking we want to be in a space like that where people literally treat themselves and each other like shit. No, I'm not accepting that type of treatment. I want nothing to do with that type of environment. So what do they do? They come and hunt us down and they try to impose this garbage upon us. Listen closely to what Dumpsy said. They want to fight forever. That is the only thing I agree with when it comes to Dumpsy. You're damn right we're going to fight forever. Now, people handle things how they handle things. There are people who are going to just go and handle business. If that's how they handle it, that's how they handle it. What we're saying, if you think you're going to perpetrate any unlawful act upon us, we are going to take action to protect ourselves. We're not concerning ourselves with any subjects out there who want to say and do whatever they want to other people just because they're black. If you're going to get outraged, you're going to get outraged. We're not going to bear your outrage and feel guilty for defending ourselves. Keep in mind when it comes down to it, whether it's a criminal situation, whether it's a civil case, whether it's a licensing board, whether it's a job, you're not going to get any sweet deal. You think Dumpsy got a sweet deal with the licensing board? He can't even supervise. What kind of a business is he running if he can't even have people there who are learning and helping the business out as they're trying to get licensed? That's very common that you would have people who are post degree working in your office and earning hours and helping you out with your business. He can't even do that. And he wants you all to think everything's hunky dory. No, it isn't. He is never going to get a deal like you just heard this woman. And you got to hear what she did. And when it comes down to it, to the nitty gritty, it ain't going to matter because you're not going to get a sweet deal like that. So best thing you can do is cover yourself on the front end. What is that saying? An ounce of prevention 
is worth a pound of cure if you're not indulging in the illegal, in the harassing, in the abusing, and the false accusations, you're not going to have anything to worry about. There's nothing anyone can do. You wouldn't care if somebody called a job or a contractor or a funding source. If it's a lie, it's a lie. These demons have to make up lies in order to try to even a score. Well, here's the situation. Whoever decides to avoid heeding the warning, you're left to your own devices. But I will nonetheless give that advice though. Be sure not to touch that dial after you hear buyer be where? So you worked for the Escambia County Sheriff's Office as a crime scene technician until May 18th, 2018, correct? Yes, ma'am, I did. And that's the day that you were fired? Yes, ma'am. And you were fired because it came to light that you were stealing drugs from the evidence room? Yes, ma'am. Those were drugs that had been taken into evidence by the Sheriff's Office? Yes, ma'am. And you had actually collected some of those yourself? I don't know if I'd actually collected any of them. And the drugs that you were stealing were opiates? Yes, ma'am. And that included hydrocodone and oxycodone? Yes, ma'am. Then after you were fired, you were also arrested, correct? Correct. You were charged with 24 felony charges? Yes, ma'am. You understand that a felony is a crime that's punishable by more than one year? Yes, ma'am. You had, of your 24 charges, two of those were first-degree felonies. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And a first-degree fel felony is punishable by up to 30 years in prison for each charge? Yes, ma'am. And those first-degree felonies were for trafficking in hydrocodone and trafficking in oxycodone? Correct. And then you also had 22 third-degree felonies, correct? Yes, ma'am. And a third-degree felony is punishable by up to five years in prison. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. So of those 22 charges, 11 of those counts were for possession of a controlled substance? Yes, ma'am. And 11 of those counts were for grand theft of a controlled substance. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And you were stealing those drugs because you had developed a, an opiate habit, a drug habit. Is that correct? An addiction, yes, ma'am. And you testified a little while ago that those issues, your drug issue, began about a year before your arrest? Yes, ma'am. While your habit persisted, you continued to work on your job as a crime scene technician, is that correct? Correct. And you were still processing crime scenes while you were using the opioids? Correct. First, you were taking tramadol, is that right? Correct. And you started taking tramadol many years ago? Yes, ma'am. For migraines? Yes, ma'am. And at some point that quit working, so you went to a pain management doctor? Yes, ma'am. And that pain management doctor prescribed Lortab? Yes, ma'am. So you took Lortab for what period of time? A uh, little while. I don't really remember how long. Okay. So you had a prescription for Lortab at the beginning, right? Yes, ma'am. And then your prescription ran out? Yes, ma'am. And you still continued to take Lortab after that? Yes, ma'am. So when you were continuing to take Lortab, those were drugs that you were stealing from the evidence room? Yes, ma'am. So you didn't go back to get another prescription from your pain management doctor? I think I got two prescriptions from her. And then there was a, like a period of time that I wasn't using, and then I went to taking it. And at some point, you also started taking oxycodone? Yes, ma'am. And you did not have a prescription for that, is that correct? Correct. And that oxycodone you were taking also came from the evidence locker at the sheriff's office? Yes, ma'am. And the number of pills that you stole from the evidence room grew over time, is that right? No, it just depended on what was in the case that I took at the time. So you would steal some and then you would use those up and then you would go and steal some more? Yes, ma'am. And over time, you developed somewhat of a tolerance for those drugs? Yes, ma'am. So you had to take more to get the same effect? Yes, ma'am. And what was that effect that you got from taking those drugs? Just to help me feel normal and to be able to get through the day. So you had to take the opioid drugs just to feel normal? Yes, ma'am. So how did you feel when you did not take them? I didn't feel good. I had a headache. Did you have difficulty thinking clearly when you were not taking them? Yes, ma'am. 
did you need those opioids after time to function normally? Yes, ma'am. And for time, you used both the Lortab and the OxyContin at the same time, is that right? Correct. And you were still taking tramadol? Not that I know of. Not that you know of? I mean, I don't remember. Not from the doctor. Okay. What do you mean, not from a doctor? I just mean I didn't have a prescription for, or I did have a prescription for tramadol for a long time. Okay, but you can't remember if you were taking that at the same time as you were taking the Lortab and the oxycodone? No, ma'am, I can't recall. When you were originally prescribed Lortab, you were prescribed just one or two a day, is that right? Correct. And you ended up taking eight to ten a day? Correct. So that was five to ten times the actual prescribed dose? Correct. And how many OxyContin a day were you taking? I don't, I don't remember. A couple. Three to four? Yes, ma'am. And while you were taking these Lortab and the, when you were taking the five to ten times the prescribed amount of Lortab, and when you're taking OxyContin, you were still processing crime scenes? Yes, ma'am. And you cannot say for certain that you were not taking Lortab when you processed the crime scene in this case, correct? I was not taking Lortab at the time I processed that crime scene. Okay. Do you remember giving a deposition on October 30th of last year? Yes, ma'am. So at that deposition, I was there and Ms. Jessen was there? Do you recall that? Yes, ma'am. And you were sworn to tell the truth, correct? Yes, ma'am. Just says I don't know that I didn't think that I was. So on October 30th, when I ask you, when you went out there to the scene, talking about the scene in this case, said at that time you were taking Lortab, is that right? And your response was, I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. Isn't that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you were definitely taking Tramadol when you processed this scene, correct? I think so. And you were taking more than the prescribed amount? No, ma'am. So with the 24 felony counts you were charged with, you were facing potentially 170 years in prison. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And that was 30 years for each of the two first-degree felony charges plus five years for the 22 third-degree felony charges, right? Yes, ma'am. And you were allowed to enter a no-contest plea rather than a guilty plea? Yes, ma'am. And adjudication was withheld, meaning that you are not, as you sit here, a convicted felon, correct? Correct. You received no jail time? No, ma'am. You still have the right to vote? Yes, ma'am. If you apply for a job and have to answer the question of whether you're a convicted felon, you can truthfully say no, correct? Correct. In spite of being arrested and charged with 24 felonies? Yes, ma'am. And at some point, you must have been made aware of your criminal punishment code score sheet that showed you were looking at a minimum prison term of 94.5 months in prison, correct? I don't remember ever seeing that sheet, but... You never saw your score sheet? Mm, I mean, not that I know of. Would you agree that 94.5 months is almost eight years? Yes, ma'am. So, even though you pled no contest to 24 felonies, um, you received no prison time, even though you scored prison time, wouldn't you agree that that was a great deal for you? Yes, ma'am. You entered your plea July of 2019? Yes, ma'am. So if you had received the prison sentence of almost eight years under the score sheet, that means you would be sitting in prison right now, correct? Correct. And are you aware that at the end of the trial, a jury is instructed at the end of the trial that when they are evaluating a witness's credibility, they can consider whether that witness has ever been convicted of a felony? Yes, ma'am. But you haven't been convicted, have you? No, ma'am. So would you agree that testifying as a witness who has no felony convictions makes you a better witness than one who does have felony convictions? Approach, please. Instead of receiving...
prison or even jail time, you received probation and community control? Correct. So you got a total of 10 years probation with the first two of that on community control? Yes, ma'am. And community control is basically like house arrest? Yes, ma'am. That means you remain at home most of the time, right? Yes, ma'am. But you're still allowed to leave to go to work, to go to the doctor, to do necessary things, to come to court. Is that correct? Correct. And a requirement for you under that plea agreement is that you testify truthfully in any and all cases where you are a witness as a former crime scene technician for the Escambia County Sheriff's Office? Yes, ma'am. And you do want to help the state, correct? No, I'm just here to tell the truth. And the, the prosecutor, the state, is the one who decides whether you're testifying truthfully? No, the jury does. Well, as far as the plea agreement goes, you had an obligation to testify truthfully, right? Yes, ma'am. And would you agree that the jury is not the one who decides that for purposes of the plea agreement? It actually has to be up to the state? I guess. So if you're found to be in violation of the plea agreement, then you will be resentenced and possibly sent to prison? Yes, ma'am. And are you aware that under Florida law, if the state believes that you have helped them get a conviction with your testimony, they can file a motion to have the court further reduce your sentence? Are you mm -hmm. aware of that? No, ma'am, not. I uh, no idea. 